Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to another Sims 4 speedboarding video or welcome to the channel if you are new here. Sit in today's video, I'm going to be building in the world of Strangerville, which is the world that we got from the game pack, The Sims 4 Strangerville, <laughs> and I'm going to be building a maximalist Victorian home. So this house ends up having uh, four bedrooms and, well, technically four bathrooms, but three proper bathrooms. There's like a hidden one in the basement, which I'll get onto in a minute, but it's built on a 30 by 20 slot. Now this week, this video was a suggestion by actually two of you. So about two weeks ago, I built a coastal family home in the world of Windenburg and I got a comment and it said, I would love to see you build kind of like an, uh, a maximalist electric, electric? Eclectic, not electric, <laughs> family home and kind of have like a mixture of all these different styles. And it was one thing that I like kind of noted down my head and I was like, yeah, that's a really good idea. And then a couple of days later on a different video, I also got a request to do a maximalist house, but to do a Victorian one. And as I got two comments, literally within like the space of like two days or something, I thought, do you know what? I'm, I'm going to get ahead and I'm going to build exactly that. And so this is how it turned out. So I hope you guys like it. But anyway, getting on and actually talking a little bit more about the build itself. So like I already mentioned, the house ends up having like four bedrooms and three real bathrooms. And then there is, I don't want to say, it's not a fake bathroom. It's got a toilet in there and it has got a shower and bath combo, but it's the one that's from the Strangefield game pack. And it looks like it's been made out of planks of woods and just leftover bed sheets and stuff like it's not a proper one but it's it kind of looks a little bit makeshifty but there is a basement in this house and there's also a kind of like a little secret bunker in the basement so you can see that i've already built the main structure of the house and i'm already coming in and i'm doing the floor plans you can see as i placed down the original staircase to kind of like go onto the upstairs portion there was kind of like an empty space next to it and i thought perfect opportunity i'm going to add in a another staircase but it's going to go into the basement because it was kind of like a a perfect placement for it in the floor plan so then i came into the basement and you can see at the minute i've kind of got three different rooms in the basement or like a hallway and then three separate rooms i do end up changing it so then it ends up being another level underneath the basement itself because originally i was thinking okay well this house is a victorian house typically victorian houses can have cellars or basements like it's not like out the ordinary and so i was going to do maybe like a utility room down there maybe like a little chill sofa space where sims can like hang out and watch tv and stuff but then as i was building this i did develop quite an in-depth storyline for the sims that are going to be living here in my save file because by the way this house is going to be for my save and as i was thinking about the storyline i really liked the idea of two of the household sims being quite paranoid not paranoid in the sense of in cast that's going to be one of their traits it's more so they're going to be quite paranoid in the sense of when they're walking around the world of strangeville they are very aware of what is happening in this world like if you by the way if you've never played the strangeville game pack and you and you download it for the first time you're gonna honestly you're in for a surprise it always makes me feel a little bit uneasy whenever i get my sims to come to the world of strangeville because basically if your sims are infected this is the thing as well i never want to talk too much about the strangeville game pack in the sense of the gameplay because it's something that you kind of like uncover in your own personal gameplay and so for, for so long i've been trying to avoid actually talking about like the ins and outs of the gameplay because just in case you've never downloaded it and you'll want to download it i don't want to spoil it for you but i mean strangerville the game pack has been out for a good couple of years now so i feel like i'm, I'm good but i'm still not going to go in depth with the storyline just in case you are someone that hasn't played it but if you walk around the world of strangerville basically some sims walk around they're infected their eyes are like popping out their head their jaws like just go and skew with like it's just it's a lot and so i was thinking that two of the sims in this household are really paranoid in the sense of when they're walking around the like the the city center or like the town center they're consistently looking over their shoulder they're consistently just thinking about all these different theories of what's happening and they're very aware and so i thought it would be a really nice idea to have like a normal basement it's got a little bit like a utility room area kind of like storage i put some bikes on the wall and just tried to make it look like a general bits and bobs room but then there is a hidden door which i tried to disguise behind a bookcase originally when i was doing the floor plan i did actually use some base game doors which are meant to look like bookcases and they're meant to be hidden doors and i placed down two of them into the basement i just really didn't like the look of them and so in the end i placed down a normal door and then i got a bookcase that would be able to cover it if it was like pushed in front like it was the correct height and then i kind of put it in a placement that it looks like sims have recently gone down into this second basement and it's just kind of like been pulled out i was really happy with with the way it looked because it's completely functional like your sims don't have any like problems 
with like getting into the basement it looks like it's a bit tight like it does look like it's a tight squeeze but yeah it, it works 100 percent. but i really liked the idea of having like this little secret bunker in the basement and so yeah that's one of the features of this house but in terms of the inside like style and the interior completely out of my comfort zone i'm not gonna lie to you this is a style that i am really not familiar with the maximalist style i I tend to do that anyway, but not in like a sense of maximalist style in a sense of like green wallpapers and orange sofa and yellow rug. Like I don't do that kind of style. I just do it maximalist in the sense of all of the houses that I build are just extremely cluttered. I try and make them feel as realistic as I can possible. Just placing down all these little like bits and bobs, you know, all the tiny like little like cracks and nooks and crannies. And I love doing that kind of like maximalism, but in a sense of maximalism in the art style where it's, you have crazy different types of wallpapers and sofas and try and combine them to make it look like it makes sense. I am not familiar with. This is my first time at building anything in this style. And I kind of put myself in the bit of a deep end because it ends up being a fairly big house, I want to say. I mean, it's got a kitchen, a dining room. It's also got a lounge space. And then it's also got a little, I want to call it like a psychic's room. You know at the paranormal stuff pack and we've got the ability for your sims to sit at one of them little like crystal balls and they can like make the chairs float and they can summon like Bone Hilda and they can talk to ghosts and stuff. There's a room for that in this house. It's actually located at the front right hand side. So you see where I've kind of got this little bump out and it's got them uh, really big windows the medium wall height windows and they're from at the strange bill game pack i'm looking at them i'm really hoping that you're following along with me basically on the bottom right hand side at the front of the build ends up being like a little psychic's room in there it is very eclectic there is loads of stuff but the thing is with this style which i'm not really familiar with you have to place down loads of different types of colors and patterns and all these different things to make it make sense and to be honest it can be a little bit daunting like i was placing down these crazy wallpapers like the wallpaper in this house by the way is wallpaper that i have never done before i use a lot of the decor to the max kit a lot of like the paranormal stuff pack lots of them kind of packs if you get my drift like movie hangout and i think i also use a little bit of like vintage glamour here and there them kind of packs there is a lot of them in this house but in this kind of style you have to place down loads of different patterns and colors and just stuff and at first you're looking at it and you're thinking oh this is actually looking quite bad but then you have to kind of like power through it and then it comes together and yeah i'm really happy i'm really proud of the way this house turned out because like i said this is my first time ever building in this kind of eclectic maximalist style and yeah i threw myself in the deep end but i'm really i'm really happy with it so i hope you guys like it as well but anyway getting on and actually talking about what i'm doing right now so you can see that i'm already coming in and just doing the landscaping the landscaping for the front garden it came together so nicely like it was just buttering over i was doing it without like any difficulty different story for the back garden i'm not gonna lie i did have to do the back garden landscaping twice because i just couldn't figure out how i wanted the back garden landscaping to be where i'm building on a 30 by 20 slot and i'm also building in kind of like the cliffy part <laughs> of the world of strangerville i didn't really want to completely fence in the back garden because i feel like if i would have had a completely like fenced in back garden with like really high fences it would have looked nice and for like the strange feel gameplay it would make sense so you don't have like the loonies coming in and trying to get into your house but i then didn't want to kind of like cut off the view because the views that this house has got absolutely beautiful like there is so many different beautiful screenshot locations in this house and also the screenshots for this house i am just so happy with there was a few that i placed down into like the end of the video where it might just be a screenshot of pretty much just like the view of what your sims are going to see because there is so many different art easels in this house and if your sims is someone that likes to paint from reference they're not going to have a problem like the placement that i put the art easels in i did it so your sims can basically paint on the top balcony like on the upper portion of the build and they can just look out onto the landscape and onto like little rivers and cliffs and like electricity poles which really aren't that like interesting but there is loads of stuff in the distance for your sims to look at and try and paint from reference but then there is also another art easel on the lower portion in kind of like a little gazebo that i've built you can see that i've already built it on the other side of the back garden and in the gazebo that ends up being like a little chess table the art easel like i said and try to make it feel like an artist is actually painting there so i placed down like paint brushes and paint tubes and cans and stuff and there is also like a little seating area but then as well as that in the back garden there ends up being a few different planters there ends up being like a flower arranging table a barbecue area a telescope 
I didn't place down any sun lounges. I was debating it because I like my Sims to have as many things to do in a back garden as possible. But for the Sims that I imagine to live in this house, I don't really feel like they're the kind of Sims that would, you know, put on their bikini and try and go and get a tan outside like that. It's just not them. And so I did decide to not include sun lounges. But of course, if you want them, you can just add them back in. But moving on from that and actually getting on and actually talking about the sims that are going to be living in this house for my save file. So the household consists of four sims and I'm actually using a pre-existing family to kind of like base this storyline off because I'm going to be using this family in my save file. They're going to be staying but I am going to be adding an extra household member and the family that I'm going to be using, the pre-existing townies, are the Eclectic Arts household. So if you're not familiar, it's a household that consists of three sims. We have Alice Martin, Mark Eggleston, I think. I think that's how you pronounce his name and then leslie holland and they're basically just three mates they wanted to buy a house together and you know explore all of their creative hobbies because one of them is really into writing one of them is really into gardening and then one of them is really into music now in their household bio it states that they basically received a lump sum of money from all of their parents and then that's how they was able to buy the house in Strangeville where they originally lived because I'm building on their original lot by the way when you go into like a brand new safe hole this is the original lot they live in Apparently their parents gave them a sum of money and they was able to buy this house, which I think is quite unrealistic, if I'm being honest with you. I mean, in this economy, I don't really think you're going to be able to buy a house. Well, for starters, actually, in this economy, you can't really buy a house nowadays. But I feel like in this economy, in the, this in The Sims anyway, I feel like to buy a house with your friends, you'd probably just buy like a, a small little like two, three bedroom bungalow, or maybe you might just buy an apartment. I feel like to buy an absolutely massive Victorian house with just money that your mum and dad gave you, or like your mum and mum and dad and dad gave you, I just feel like it's very unrealistic. And so I have decided to change that storyline a little bit, and I'm gonna be adding an extra household member, which is going to be Mark Eggleston's aunt. Now, I really liked the idea of his auntie has been living in this house for a little while, and he was looking for somewhere to live, and maybe he ran into these problems where he couldn't buy a house in this economy, didn't really have the funds to be able to buy the kind of house that him and his friends wanted and so luckily enough his auntie happens to live in quite a big spacious victorian house and half the rooms were just empty and so she said you know what come and move in with your mates and you can live here with me now i'm going to focus on the aunt storyline first of all because i personally think this is the most interesting and kind of like the most fun out of all the storylines i mean they've all all of the sims like alice mark and leslie they've all got their own individual storylines and hobbies and skills and stuff but when i was thinking about this storyline in general like the household overview i was really just thinking about the aunt just like first of all and so i had this idea that mark's aunt has lived in this house for a good couple of years i say good couple of years it's very cluttered on the inside. I mean, I'm building a maximalist Victorian house. There is so many just bits and bobs and clustering. It's just, it's very cluttered on the inside. So saying that maybe, maybe she's lived here for, for a while. Either way, she's lived in this house and for a good few years, the house has been completely empty and it's only been her and her cats living here. Now, I was thinking that she was previously married and her partner was in the scientist career, but not the scientist career that we got from Get to Work where your Sims, you know, they can be scientists and they can make all these things and go to space. Not that kind of scientist. The scientist that just so happens to work in the secret lab in the world of Strangeville. Now again, I'm not going to talk too much about the Strangeville gameplay just in case you've never played it and you are maybe wanting to get it when the pack goes on sale or something or maybe you're just seeing if you would fancy playing with that kind of pack. So I'm not going to talk too much about the actual Strangeville mystery. I know it's been out for a while but I just, my worst case scenario is spoiling the, the gameplay for you so I'm not going to talk too much about the actual storyline aspect of, you know, the, the ins and outs of Strangeville but I was thinking that that the aunt's previous partner was a scientist in the world of Strangeville and they were quite high up in their job. Now I imagine that just one day or like one particular week their partner just never returned home and they just kind of like disappeared into thin air like just vanished off the face of the earth and I imagine the aunt was just consistently calling up, consistently going to maybe like her partner's manager or boss or something asking questions where they've gone because they kind of left without a trace and no one was telling her anything no one was saying anything and i imagine that they were probably like mm, yeah they didn't really fancy being with you anymore and so they've just like up and left i imagine it was that kind of scenario like they were trying to cover something up she was not having any of this and so it, since then she's really got in touch with her kind of like psychic abilities and she's now become a psychic to try and figure out what is happening in the world of Strangeville and what happened to her previous partner. Because the way I was picturing it, I was thinking that 
her and her previous partner, they'd been married for donkey's years and they, they loved each other a lot. So I feel like the partner wouldn't just up and leave. And like, I feel like she would know that as well. Like it's not just something that, mm, don't really fancy you anymore. <laughs> See you later. I don't think it was that kind of scenario. And I think she knows that as well. And so I was thinking that the military in the world of Strangeville absolutely despises women because she is adamant that she knows that something's going on and they won't tell her and you know she's she's just trying to figure it out and the military and the scientists are probably going around and telling people you know don't listen to this woman like she's gone a bit nuts like don't ignore her but I imagine that there is a select few people in the town that kind of believe her and maybe maybe now with the stranger people mystery if this is something you want to do in gameplay people are more so starting to believe her rather than the military and stuff and so yeah i imagine that after a really long time she was able to get in touch with her like psychic abilities maybe it's something that she discovered when i don't know maybe maybe she thought something and then i don't know she became a psychic i don't know how you become a psychic who knows how to become a psychic like you don't really apply for a job on linkedin like, i don't know how that happens but she she somehow became a psychic and she then figured out that she she can actually try and get in touch with the other side you know she can con contact ghosts and she can have these conversations to like the the ghosty world and she has been maybe having a few conversations with her partner but maybe they're very like muted like she can only get drips and drabs you can't really get the full story about what happened to them because i was thinking that the partner that was a scientist they probably went down deep into the science lab if you've played with the strangeville game pack and you've explored it you probably know what i'm talking about but you know down down into the lab where there's something that's going on i imagine that was probably the the scientist cause of death and so they've been trying to cover it up because there is nothing in the basement to like the normal eye but I mean, we know that there is secretly and that's the whole entire Strangeville mystery. I love this storyline so much. I feel like this is just such a fun storyline. Just for this single sim alone, like not even including the other three household members of this household, just this single sim, like this aunt storyline, I just feel like it's so fun and interesting. And I can honestly picture running around the world of Strangeville, like the town of Strangeville, maybe like handing out leaflets or like booklets and trying to trying to let people know about what's happening and you know, all these things are going on and everyone probably just chucks in the bin and just thinks that she's she's lost it or something. I just love this storyline. I feel like it's gonna be so interesting for gameplay, I think anyway. But moving on from that and actually getting on and talking about the next sim in this household, which is gonna be her nephew and then name is i've already told you mark eggleston i think that's how you say them now mark is actually unemployed and something also i wanted to touch on but i kind of like skipped over it you know when i said i feel like it's really unrealistic for three sims that are just friends to be able to buy quite a spacious big house in the world of strangeville with just money that their parents gave them as a loan one i feel like it's unrealistic two none of the sims have a job like, they're all unemployed. How does that make any sense? And also, something that I really don't like about this, like, household, this family, when you go into a brand new save, they're meant to be best mates, and that's why they're living together. They're not even friends. Like, they, they don't have a relationship. And it really just bugs me when the Sims team does that, when they're like, oh, all these best mates are living together, like, they, they love each other's company. You go into their, like, relationships category, they, they barely know each other. They probably don't even know what their favourite colour is or maybe if, what their siblings' names are. Like, I feel like the Sims team really skipped over actually building a relationship between the Sims. So in my save, that is something that I'm definitely going to be fixing. Like They're actually going to be best mates. <laughs> so don't worry about that. But yeah, Mark is unemployed, like all of the other Sims in the household, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But he has the traits of being an art lover, a bookworm, and he is cheerful. And his aspiration is to be a friend of the world. Now, in terms of his personality, I didn't really know what direction to take him in because I feel like with his traits, they're quite, they're quite generic. Like, I feel like loads of people are cheerful. A lot of people love a book and, I mean, loads of people can appreciate art. So in terms of his actual personality, I didn't really have too much to go off. But I was more so thinking about his skills and all the different skills that he already pre-existently has. And I thought I'd build his personality up around them. So he has two skills in gardening, four skills in logic and two in painting. And I was thinking that he wants to be a painter but he also likes to dabble in a bit of gardening and so in the back garden i placed down a ton of different planters i was thinking that he is the household member that kind of like maintains them i feel like everyone else just doesn't really gardening is not their kind of cup of tea and so he is a gardener but he also loves painting and i'm gonna actually give him a career because it makes no sense that he's just staying at home consistently and so i'm gonna be giving him a career and he is going to be a painter and so that is what he's gonna do as his day-to-day -day job now i was thinking about his relationships 
relationships with all the other household members, you know, with Alice and Leslie, the, the two existing Sims. And I was thinking, okay, well, how did they meet? Like, how are they, how is their friendship formed? And I was really liking the idea of him and Alice maybe have been friends since like they were little so maybe like they were childhood friends or something they've kind of grown up together maybe their family are close friends and then maybe Alice introduced I was about to say Martin then his name is not Martin it's because Alice's last name is Martin maybe Alice introduced Mark into her her friendship circle and it happened to have Leslie and then since then they've kind of like formed a friendship as kind of like a three maybe like they're like three little musketeers and ever since then it's been these three friends now when you go into a brand new safe vault all three sims are single none of them have any partners they're not in any relationships and I was thinking that this whole entire friendship between the three of them has just been completely platonic like there is no no one fancies each other like no like it's all good like everyone is just they're the best of mates they all have similar interests you know they're all very artsy in a sense of one really loves music one really loves painting and gardening one really likes writing and i feel like them as a three they just like gel together and they can talk about all things creative i feel like it's never really been a question it's just been they're the best of mates and that's it but i did really like the idea of possibly mark's aunt you know the psychic i really like the idea of her trying to ship and her trying to form a relationship between her nephew and leslie i don't know what it is but i was really thinking about this when i was decorating all of the bedrooms i was really thinking that she can't wrap her head around the fact that he's just friends with these sims i feel like she would maybe want him to settle down maybe she wants him to have a partner maybe maybe he's never had a relationship in his life before and maybe she wants that for him and so i feel like she would try and pair mark and leslie together don't know what it is but i just can kind of like picture it i think in my safe fault i probably won't give them then like a, a romantic interest or anything but i might put it in the household description it's kind of like something that if you wanted to do that in gameplay you can do but moving on and talking about leslie which is the next sim in this household so leslie is a goofball she's a bookworm and she is a geek and she has the aspiration to be a best-selling author now again another thing that annoys me about this household is leslie wants to be a best-selling author but she has no skills in writing. So she has four skills in comedy, five skills in logic, and five skills in programming or like skill points. But she has none in writing. But somehow she her dream job is to be a best selling author. Like I, I'm I'm a hundred percent sure the woman has never opened up a Google Doc and started writing something because if she would have even attempt to practice writing one time, she would have like a slight little skill point. So I think that's just something that the Sims team missed over. For my safe fault, I am going to be giving her a few different skill points in writing and I'm also going to be making it so she will actually be in the writing career because again, it makes absolutely no sense that she's not got a job. Like it literally takes two seconds in game to get your sim to be in a career. Like it's really, I, I think it was just an oversight or something, but in my safe fault, she's going to be employed. She's going to be having a nine to five job. Now I was reading somewhere that her skills in logic and programming could indicate that maybe she used to have a different job. Maybe she used to go and be like a tech guru or something, or maybe she was in computer science. And I really liked this idea of that possibility because it would make sense because she has got a few skills in logic and programming which would be skills that i feel like you would have as a sim if you was like a tech guru or something and so i took the idea and i tried to expand on it a little bit not too much but i liked the idea of maybe she went to university i was thinking university of i think it's foxbury that have got the distinguished degree for computer science maybe she went and got this degree she spent years and a ton of money getting this degree to actually be able to get a really good job in like the tech guru Room. and once she graduated she had this I, i'm gonna say quite good degree maybe she got like a first class or something i haven't actually played with the university system in a while my sim is currently going through it but she hasn't she hasn't graduated yet so i can't remember if you actually get like a first class second class third class i think you can but i imagine she got a really good degree in computer science like she was doing really well in the subject and then once she left and she actually got a job she realised she didn't actually want to be a tech guru at all. Like, she actually didn't like the career. Which, by the way, I feel like is very realistic and quite common nowadays anyway. For people to go and get a degree in a certain subject and then to eventually get to the end of that degree and then realise that they actually want to be doing something else and their heart is elsewhere. I feel like that's a very realistic thing to do. And I feel like with this sim, with Leslie, it kind of makes sense because she has such high programming and logic skills. It makes sense if she's got a degree in computer science or something techy. But then maybe along the way, maybe she got her first job in the tech guru career and she realised not long after, actually, I don't really want to be doing this because I don't feel like I can really 
like be creative or anything and so that's maybe where the writing portion came in maybe she was doing a little bit of coding or maybe she was writing descriptions for a website or something and maybe along the way of writing all these different descriptions for a website she realized that she just really likes writing and so since then she has decided that her dream job and where she wants to be in life is to become an author that was kind of like the whole overview that i had for leslie i honestly don't have too much for her as a sim i do really like the idea though of mark's aunt really wanting her and mark to get together like i just feel like that's such a fun storyline and i imagine mark and leslie are just like no it's not happening like we're just friends but i like the idea i feel like the reason as well by the way that mark's aunt isn't probably pushing this onto Alice is because maybe where Alice and Mark were like childhood friends, maybe the aunt knows Alice to kind of be like her her niece or something. So it kind of just that's the kind of relationship they have. They've been really close throughout their lives. And so yeah, that was kind of like Leslie's storyline. But now we're moving on into the last household member, which is the storyline of Alice. So Alice, if you've ever seen the Strangerville game pack trailer, is basically the main sim in the trailer. Well, one of the main sims anyway. She's basically telling the storyline or kind of like the overview of the Strangerville game pack in the trailer. And I've always just really liked Alice because of that, just because we saw her for the first time in the trailer when whenever there's a trailer for something, you're just so excited. Like the new family, that are coming in the growing together expansion pack i know they're going to hold like a special place in my heart because all we've been seeing the past few weeks upcoming towards this expansion pack is this family and kind of like their family dynamics so i know when it comes around to actually playing with them and seeing them in and around the new world of i think it's pronounced san sequoia i'm just gonna have a special place in my heart because they're all i've known up until when we actually got the expansion pack it was the same kind of thing for me with the strangeville game pack like she was one of the main sims that you saw in the trailer and so i always have kind of like a little a little special place in my heart for alice but she is a creative music lover and a bookworm they're her traits and she has that i was about to say the household aspiration she has the aspiration to be a painter and i think for her kind of like day-to-day -day job I'm not going to go down the route of being a painter just because one of the other sims is going to be a painter. I'm going to go down the route of her being a musician because weirdly enough, even though she is a painter, she has no skills in painting. Again, going back to Leslie, I don't know why she didn't have a single skill in writing. Same kind of story for Alice. She has no skills in painting. She does, however, have three skills in guitar. I think it's five or six skills in piano and five or six skills in violin. So she is very musically inclined. And you will see that when it comes around to her bedroom because I try to decorate all of the bedrooms depending on the sims and their hobbies and their skills and their personalities and also their careers. In her bedroom, she has like a little music corner. So it's got a little kind of like standing piano. Well, it's not a standing piano, it's a keyboard, but I try to make it look like a standing piano. There is also a guitar and then also a violin in there as well. And then I also dotted about a few different guitars around the house like on the inside not in just her bedroom but Alice is going to be a musician in my save file because I didn't want to have two sims in the same household being the same career like I wanted this to be a very creative household I feel like when the sims team were designing this household in CAS for all of us to play with I feel like they wanted it to be a very creative household to play with I just don't want to have two sims that are in creative jobs but it be the same job if you get my drift and so yeah she is going to be a musician she's gonna just say goodbye to painting she probably still paints like, every now and again like she has got an art easel in her bedroom because her bedroom is the one that's got the upstairs balcony she has got an art easel out there but i feel like that's maybe just something that she likes to do every now and then not on like a day-to-day -day, everyday basis but maybe when she's a bit bored she might just pick up a paintbrush and try and paint from reference or something but that was just kind of like the whole overview of the whole entire household i am so in love with this storyline with all the individual sim storylines their relationships with one another i just think it would be so fun for gameplay there is also a few different cats in this household which i mean they're cats so i don't really know what kind of storyline i could give them i got a comment a little while ago and it said that i always place down like food bowls and like dog beds or like pet beds into my in, in my household but i never talk about the law of the animals i don't really know what kind of law i can give to a dog or a cat unfortunately it's not the sims 2 where dogs and cats can have careers i don't know if you ever played the sims 2 but i remember i had this one golden retriever and they had a job and i think they were on like tv or something or they were in a commercial and every single day this dog used to walk out the house and go into a carpool like little car outside the house and they used to go to work literally that i sound like i'm making this up your sims 
dogs and cats in The Sims 2 used to be able to have careers. Unfortunately, that is not a thing that we can do in The Sims 4. I think hamsters and rodents and like just rats in general can have careers where they can be like astronauts and stuff. But if I'm being honest, I rarely ever play with the rodents from My First Pet stuff just because it's just not my kind of cup of tea. It's not my kind of gameplay. But yeah, there is a couple of cats in this household. You might have noticed I did place down some food bowls into the kitchen and then also a little litter box into the laundry room. But moving on from that and actually finally getting back and talking about what I'm doing right now and what is on the screen. I'm so sorry that I spoke over the majority of the downstairs, I say the majority, all of the downstairs furnishing. I've still got the basement to do, so don't worry about that. And I've still got all the bedrooms upstairs to do, but I have just been so excited to share this storyline for all of these different sims. I've just been thinking about it ever since I built this house early this week and I've just been really excited about it. So hopefully you don't mind that I did speak over quite a lot of the furnishing. But, I mean, you can see how the house has been furnished so far. What we're thinking. Do you like it? I love it. I absolutely love this house. I just think it's so unique to anything that I've ever done before. Definitely something that was so far out of my comfort zone. But on the same token, where it was so far from anything that I normally tend to go towards, it was quite refreshing, this build. Just because I used so many different objects in so many different swatches that, honestly, I didn't even know we had half the swatches of the objects that I've used in this house. Like, for instance, you see, I'm now moving on into one of the bedrooms. These curtains, I didn't even realise that they come in all these different swatches because... It, it's, it's from the high school expansion pack but I never use these curtains like they're never my go-to I normally like to have quite plain like white or grey curtains or like cream quite neutral I'm a neutral kind of girl so this house <laughs> just completely opposite for what I normally tend to decorate with but yeah it was really refreshing quickly though I do want to talk about what I did in the downstairs because I love the way all the individual rooms and the downstairs came together so for starters I did the hallway to start off with I then moved on into the lounge room the lounge room ends up being quite bright in this house you would have seen I end up using like blue wallpaper with another white wallpaper and then for the sofas I was going to use the decor to the max sofa which is actually the sofa that I've used in this bedroom and I was debating between it for such a long time ended up settling on one that came up from from the cottage of an expansion pack i then also did the kitchen if you're curious about the tile that i use in the kitchen it's from the high school years expansion pack i don't think i even knew that 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 swatch of that wallpaper existed honestly thank god i do all of my wallpapering off camera because i must have spent about an hour I'm not joking, trying to figure out what wallpapers I wanted to use in this house because I wanted to use wallpapers that I never go towards. I wanted to really branch out and just be completely out of my comfort zone for this one. And so when it came around to actually selecting the wallpapers, it took me forever, I'm not joking. But the the tile that's in the kitchen, yeah, it's from the high school years expansion pack and I didn't even know it existed. And I tried to kind of like color coordinate the kitchen with that wallpaper. So I use a baby blue fridge to kind of match the baby blue in the tile. And then I use a little red, kind of like bay window seat to try and match the other red portions in the tile as well absolutely love the way that the kitchen came together i then did the dining room now for the dining room i used a base game wallpaper and i like to call it a bit of a larry wallpaper also a bit of a marmite kind of wallpaper because the wallpaper that i used i feel like you either love or you hate and i absolutely love it it is so larry and it's just so the wallpaper says a lot like it says a lot without even saying anything if you get what i mean like it's just so larry and i feel like it just works so perfectly for this house i feel like when it came round to the sims actually decorating on the inside they didn't think about the symmetry between the rooms they just thought okay i like this wallpaper i'm gonna have this wallpaper i like this completely different wallpaper in this completely different style I don't care that it doesn't match. I still want to have this wallpaper. That was kind of like my approach when it came around to furnishing this house. And then you would have also seen me do it, the utility room, which had the washing machine and the tumble dryer. Also like, kind of like a little art deco bathroom off that. And then also at the psychic room, which is like where your Sims can go in. They can get like the crystal ball to like do all these things and they can speak to ghosts. They can summon Bo and Hilda and all that stuff. That room ends up being quite, quite dark. It's definitely a contrast to the next room because the next room over was the lounge room when I was talking about how light it ends up being in there because I use like blue and white wallpaper. It ends up being such a contrast but I feel like it works with this kind of like maximalist style. But now as you can see I've now moved on to the upstairs portion. I did one of the bathrooms and now I'm moving on into furnishing the first bedroom. I'm actually coming around to like tying this room off but this is going to be the auntie's room. So you know downstairs how the psychic's room was very like dark and quiet 
quite moody. I wanted to kind of follow through that theme into this bedroom because I imagine that the aunt kind of disguised, disguised? <laughs> just designed that room downstairs and she also designed obviously her bedroom. Both in here and the aunt's like little psych, I'm gonna call it the psychic room. I don't know what else to call it. The reading ballroom where you read the ball. I don't know what else you would class that room as, but in both the bedroom and that room downstairs, I end up placing down loads of different like skulls and loads of different, Oh, what they're called familiars you know the room of magic game pack when you can have like a familiar and your sim can bond to it and then it kind of like follows you around i place some of them down into this house as well even though i don't think the aunt like um i was about to say a magician <laughs> i don't think the aunt is into magic like she doesn't do spells and stuff like she's not a spellcaster. it kind of made sense for like the decoration i also placed down you wouldn't have seen it in the actual like when i place it down because you have to go into live live mode however you say it to actually see them but i placed down these glass jars there was a red one a blue one and a green one i can't remember which one i didn't include but in gameplay and you'll see it in screenshots there's little tiny ghosts in them and they are the cutest little ghosts <laughs> so you'll see them in that room as well and I think I also placed one down into the bedroom but I feel like that kind of like ghosty spellcastery like little bit of a magical sense that kind of clutter really made sense into this house and where I was building like a maximalist Victorian the more clutter the better if you get what I mean and so you know I placed some of them down into that room in her room as well in her bedroom you might notice I placed down a ton of different spell books again not because I imagine that they're a spellcaster it's more so because I really like the the look of a spell book so they're quite a nice cluster piece and so I placed them down onto the floor but I tried to place them down into like a formation so it looks like she's she's been reading these books but she hasn't been bothered to put them away and so they're just all like piling up one one another all, all like by their sofa piece i also got another one and i rotated it with the tool mod to make it look like she's been reading it in bed and then when she's like finished with the book or maybe finished her chapter and she wants to go to sleep she's kind of like tucked it down her bedside table i thought that was like a nice little realistic touch but now i'm moving on into the next bedroom which is mark's bedroom now i'm not gonna lie i had absolutely no idea what i was doing when it came around to decorate this bedroom i had such a hard time trying to figure out how do i decorate this bedroom to reflect Mark's personality because he I know he was someone that is an art lover he's a bookworm he's also got a few skills in gardening and in painting how do I reflect that though onto his bedroom I just had a really hard time about it so if you see in the top right corner you can just about see you can see that I then went ahead and decorated the exterior hallway or like the the hallway outside of his bedroom I did record it but then once I actually kept that footage in and once I edited it and sped it up I then just felt like it was a little bit unnecessary because for some reason that hallway took me forever <laughs> to decorate because I couldn't figure out what kind of decorations I wanted in that room and what kind of things I wanted in that space and so I did decide to cut it out but I basically was struggling so much with decorating Mark's bedroom that I went away, decorated a different room and then came back to it and then I had a little bit of a clearer idea of what I wanted to do in that space. In there I ended up using a lot of different posters that kind of indicate plants and like gardening and so I use one like set of posters which is from the high school years expansion pack and it was perfect because it looks like it's got loads of different like sprouts and loads of different leaves on it and stuff and so I thought okay great that would be a brilliant poster to put into that bedroom I then also found I think it's meant to be like a tapestry of cow plants and I thought brilliant again I'm gonna place that down into this room and then I also just placed down loads of different like hanging wall plants I use one ceiling light I used it above the bedside table, honestly, didn't even know it existed. It's one up from the Blooming Rooms kit, and it looks like a, like a normal circle pendant light, but then it's got a bit of ivy hanging down from it. Absolutely perfect for that room, so I placed that down into there. Also, where he's going to be a painter in my sofa, fold, I did try to make it look like he's got like a little a little painting corner in his room, kind of like in the corner. I was thinking that that way he could kind of look out either direction, because he's got quite a lot of windows in his bedroom. But then saying that, all of the bedrooms end up having quite a decent amount of decent amount of windows so they've all got like a, a nice amount of natural daylight coming into their bedrooms but i placed down like a little art easel into the corner i then moved objects and like choose a paint on top of it then placed down like individual like art brushes to make it look like they're actually like paint brushes and art things that he uses when he paints and also placed down like a a chest of drawers into that room as well one thing that i was running into when i was decorating that bedroom is i was really trying to stay away from trying to make it look like a teenager's bedroom and actually saying that that was something that i was trying to stay away from when i was decorating all of the individual bedrooms maybe it's just because i normally when it comes around to decorating like adults bedrooms or young adults bedrooms i'm also decorating to be 
for like parents because normally I do a lot of family homes with like generations and toddlers and children and stuff. I rarely ever do households that consist of just adults. And so whenever it comes around to having really colorful bedrooms, they're more so teenagers rooms or like kids rooms. And so when I was doing this house, as I was decorating, I felt like I was decorating just a bunch of different teenagers rooms, but they're just, they're just young adults or adults and they've just got very expressive personalities. But anyway, moving from that, as you can see, I've now moved on into the next bedroom, which is Leslie's bedroom. I absolutely adore this bedroom. I feel like it is such a feminine room and it is just filled with loads of different like pink pieces, blue pieces, white pieces. It's just very... It's just very feminine. I absolutely love the way it came together. In here, I decided to use the bed which came from the high school years expansion pack. I then also used a bay window in this room as well. The bay window itself is from Cats and Dogs and I used it in my favorite swatch, which is kind of like the, the pinky cushions, kind of brown kind of cream. Absolutely love that swatch. Whenever I have that in my own personal household and I ever use a bay window, I always go towards that one just because I just really like it. It's just very just very pink and my favourite colour is pink and so I always go towards that one but in that room it ends up having a bookcase, also ends up having like a little computer desk, also ends up having a wardrobe which I forgot about the wardrobe for ages so I actually placed down like the bed, the desk, the, the little bay sofa and then there was quite a big space in the corner and I was thinking I feel like this is missing something and I couldn't figure out what else to put in this room and I was like okay well maybe I can place down like a, a shelving unit or maybe I'll try a bookcase and then I kind of zoomed out and actually had a, a general overview of the room and I was like Jessica you actually forgotten a chest of drawers and so then I added in a wardrobe but it does end up having a wardrobe in there as well as well as like a mirror but I, I did forget about a wardrobe when I was decorating that room but there does end up being one in that room but now as you can see I've now moved on into the next bedroom the last bedroom in this house oh there is bedrooms in the in the bunker which we're going to move on to shortly but the actual normal bedroom that day to day you would see this is going to be Alice's bedroom. So I just realized as well, when I was talking about Alice's storyline, I completely forgot and kind of like skipped over the fact of, you know at the start of the video when I said there's going to be two Sims in this household that are quite, they're quite cautious about what's happening in the world of Strangerville. Alice is going to be one of them because where Alice was in the trailer I feel like she's very much aware of what's happening in the world of Strangerville and so her and the aunt in this household they're the ones that are always looking over their shoulders always cautious of what's happening around them I can't believe I completely forgot that part of the storyline because that was one of like the main bulk parts of the storyline in my head but you can see that I've now moved on to her room and you see by her bed by her bedside table there's kind of like a little secret file and it's kind of got like confidential written over it that i placed it down because i was thinking that she was going to be the other sim that was very aware that is what is happening she's trying to convince the other two household sims like her and the aunt are trying to convince mark and leslie there's something crazy going on like we might need to uncover something and the other two are just like yeah whatever like they don't really care but <laughs> i really feel like alice would be one of the sims that would be very aware of what is happening in this world can't believe I completely skipped over that but there is kind of like little I want to say like easter eggs in her room to kind of indicate towards that but in her room I decided to use this four poster bed which is from City Living I then also debated at one point to use I think it's meant to be like a, a wall divider or some sort of separator. It's from the My Wedding Stories game pack. Originally, I was going to try and use that to be the headboard because I thought that would be so fun and unique and just something that I've never done before. Couldn't really manage to make it work though because the size of it was just a bit too weird and if I pushed it into the wall anymore, it would kind of have like this weird dark shadow over it. And so I thought, okay, I'm not going to use the item as like the bed bed bedboard what's it called headboard not bedboard i'm not going to use it as the headboard but i am going to use that in the room and try and incorporate it somewhere and so i place it down on top of the little upright piano that i'm kind of like trying to create which by the way we've only got of what is it like less than two weeks now until we get the growing together expansion pack coming out one of the things i'm so excited about for this new expansion pack is we're getting an upright piano i no longer have to use multiple different side tables and the keyboard to try and create one because we're actually getting one in the game i'm so i'm just so excited about everything about this whole new ep and i just i cannot wait to get my hands on it but yeah you know, i place it down on top of the upright piano and then it kind of it, I was incorporating it somehow into the room but now as you can see I've now moved down downstairs into the basement and I've started furnishing kind of like the the first room that your sims would kind of see and not really suspect anything so in here I want it to look like just a general like bits and bobs room I was trying to create it so it gives the illusion that if your sims friend say for instance they invite one of their other friends 
round for dinner or something and maybe they'll just go walkabouts and just go exploring or maybe it's like come down oh you know come down with me i don't know if there's come down with me in the us but if you've ever seen come down with me in the uk you know how they just walk around each other's houses and they just explore which is such a bizarre concept maybe if someone wishes to come down here and they were to come into this this little room they wouldn't suspect anything because i placed down like very normal utility room items we have another set of washing machines and tumble dryers there is also two upstairs but I was more so placing these ones down into this room because kind of for like decoration to kind of give the illusion. But in here as well, I also placed down like a little shelving unit, which is from Strangerville. I move objects, a bike onto the wall. I then found this bookcase. This I'm so happy about. I found this bookcase. It is from the Get to Work expansion pack, but it's the exact height of the door to be like pushed in front of it so then no one suspects anything. So basically, if you was to put that bookcase right up alongside the door, you won't be able to see the door behind it. It was a perfect bookcase. Try and make it look like it's been pulled out of and then your Sims can actually walk through the door. Obviously, I made it look like so it's been pulled out so your Sims can actually get downstairs, but I feel like in gameplay, Sims would actually push that bookcase up so then when they're finished in the bunker or doing whatever they're doing down here, they can then just like push it back and then no one suspects a thing. I know that it looks like a really tight squeeze and it doesn't look like your Sims can actually walk through that door, but I promise you, I've playtested the whole entire house and it, it was absolutely fine. My Sims didn't even run into a problem when it came around to playtesting that area, which I was so happy about. But now, as you can see, I've now moved down into the basement basement. So this is the second basement. And this is pretty much like a, a safe room. So it's got enough stuff in here to keep your Sims alive, basically. It's got some bunk beds. It's also got a mini fridge. It's also got some like chest of drawers, which I imagine were just storage of maybe like extra food or stuff. There's also a listening device in here, which I was personally picturing Alice would be the one that's always using this device just to, you know, plant bugs in different sims and try and listen in on their conversations. But apart from that, I'm going to go around, finish the room off, and that is basically it. So anyway, guys, I'm going to end this voiceover right here. As always, you can download this build via the gallery. My origin ID is JessicaPyYT, or you can just search for the hashtag JessicaPyYT or just the hashtag JessicaPy. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, if you do like my content, then please do subscribe. And hopefully I will see you in my next Sims 4 speedboarding video. Bye guys.